Hi, I'm Pam East. A viewer on one of my other videos asked, how do you dome metal clay pieces? And that is a great question. I decided to provide a video answer. So first of all, why do you want to dome your pieces? You want to dome your work because it gives it a more finished and professional look. It doesn't have to be a deep dome. It can be a very shallow dome, but it's going to look more professional that way. Um, so how do you do it? There's two ways. You can do it before it's fired or after it's fired. And which you choose is going to depend upon the design of the piece. For very simple pieces, like little earring pieces or simple pendants, I usually fire them flat. I usually dome them after firing. And the reason for it, this is it's, it's actually fewer steps. I can cut out pieces, leave them flat. I don't have to manipulate them or work with them wet. I can just put them in my dehydrator and, and dry them out. And then I can lay them flat on my kiln shelf. And uh, I can fill up my kiln shelf with these flat pieces. They don't have to be supported in the kiln the way a three-dimensional form needs to be supported. And um, they're going to fire up beautifully. And as soon as they're well-centered, as soon as they're fired and well-centered, then doming them is no problem. It's very quick and easy. But what if you want to put a bale on the back? So here is a piece with a bale on the back. Um, that's not going to be easy or even possible to really get a good dome on after it's fired. I need that piece to be domed before I put that bale on. Um, another time that might not work is if I have a gemstone set. So I've got a little gemstone in this one. If that was flat and then I started doming it, that gemstone's going to fall out. So I need it to be domed and then set the gemstone in the dome and then fire it. So in these cases with stones or complicated designs, this one, everyone thinks it's flat, but it actually isn't. It does have a very slight curve to it, and it does make it look better. But look at everything that's going on there. There, there would be no way to dome this after it's fired. So that, that slight curve happened before the piece was fired. And so in these cases, I'm going to dome the pieces while they're wet and then, um, and then fire them. Let's start off with doming pieces that are already fired you're going to need a dapping block. Now they make these in metal and wood. Get the wooden dapping blocks. Wood won't mark up your piece, won't ding up your piece. Um, and a dapping block like this, they, ha they have all the dapping blocks I'm gonna show you on Amazon. Um, but a dapping block like this is gonna put a fairly deep curve on your piece. It's gonna put a pretty heavy curve into your piece, which in some cases you may want. Uh, but you might sometimes want a more shallow curve. And in those cases, you can get a dapping block like this. Um, and this one, you can see it's pretty well used. It's no problem. It still works just fine. Um, and this is a very shallow dome. I can put just a little bit of curve onto something with this. Another one I like for shallow domes is this one. Um, oh, I can't get it all in the picture here, but I think you get the idea. And these are extremely shallow uh, curves in all different sizes. I love this one. Um, if you have different shapes, you can get them with ovals. You can get them with teardrops. You can get them with hearts. These are not very expensive. And as I said, I bought all of these, or you can get all of these on Amazon. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and start with the first one because that's the one most people are familiar with. And that is the square block with all the different um, size holes. And each, each one is going to have a different amount of curve. And actually, the biggest one has the shallowest curve. Um, the, the, uh, as I look around this thing, this is probably the deepest curve right there where it will be very good. I'm going to come back to this shallow one right here. And I've got a little earring piece here. Lay that face down in your dapping block. And then that comes with a peg. So this is a dapping peg. It actually comes with two dapping pegs. They have slightly different ends on them. 
Uh, which one you use will depend upon the size and shape of the piece. Uh, this one has got a deeper, uh, it's got a deeper curve on it. I don't know if you can see that. And this one's more shallow. So if I was doing something shallow, I would use this one. If I'm doing something deep, I would use this one. And this is, to me, this is kind of deep. So I'm going to go ahead and use this one. When I hold this on, whoops, hang on, let me get the hammer. So I'm just using a mallet um, to, to smack on this thing. I never smack directly. I'm, I'm always using the pin. And I will not put this in the middle and just give it a good whack. Because if I do that, I could dimple the piece. You want to kind of sneak up on it. I'm going to work from the outsides in kind of a spiral pattern to the middle. And so I start on the outside and I'll use one finger. So I've got one finger here kind of bracing the piece and I'm holding the the, the uh, pin with the other with my other fingers and then I'm just lightly tapping around the edge and I'm not wailing on this thing notice that I'm not really picking up the hammer all that high and I'm just working my way around and eventually I'll, I'll be down into the middle but I just sort of worked it there. All right, so there it is. And I've given this a bit of a curve. And now you can see the difference. You can see that, okay, so one is curved and one is flat. And it just, it looks a lot better. Now, I, did, I didn't mention, this is, these are un, um, freshly fired pieces. I do not do any finish work before dapping. Dapping is the first thing I do after firing. So it's firing, dapping, and then patinas and other finish work. So you always do it on freshly fired pieces. All right, so what about other shapes? So what if I have this uh, diamond shape? Well, when I've got a diamond like that, I don't necessarily want to use a round form. In this case, I'm more likely to use an oval dapping block, um, but the process is exactly the same. Uh, I'm going to just go ahead and work my way around the edges, just like before. And there, that's now got a nice, it's got a nice um, curve on it. And that, again, it just looks a little more professional that way. So that's how you use a dapping block. They're not rocket science. Um, and they're uh, inexpensive and you can, you can get them on Amazon or, or from another jewelry supply place. And so now let's look at what do you do if you want to dome a piece before you fire it. If I'm going to be forming wet clay, the first question is, what am I forming it on? And this is probably what I use most of the time. This is a very gentle dome. This is a tap light or a closet light. You can put these up in the closet, they're battery operated, and then you can just press them to turn them on. Um, so that's a tap light. And I love this, it's a very soft dome. Um, I usually take the dome off of the base. You just cut this base off um, because I usually use a lot of them and they just stack more easily if I don't have the base on there. So I can, I can just stack them up. They come in different sizes. So here's a, here's a smaller version. It's still a very gentle dome. You know, it's not much deeper than the, than the big one. Um, so those are really nice. This one travels well. I use this one when I'm traveling more. Another thing that I like are plastic Easter eggs. I love plastic Easter eggs. Now, plastic Easter eggs have a pointy side and a round side, and you want to use the round side, the pointy side. Well, you could use the pointy side for effect, but it's not going to be a smooth dome, and these are a smooth dome. And the best time to get plastic Easter eggs is the day after Easter at your local craft store. <laughs> They're going to have them all marked down. Um, I've also seen these copper forms. These are um, uh, copper molding forms, which you can get. Uh, I believe Cool Tools carries these. 
And so this is nice because it gives me an oval shape. These are some oval shapes. This is nice if, you know, if I was making, you know, four sets of matching earrings, round earrings, I could use this. And it's, a, it's not too deep. It's fairly, it's a fairly, fairly shallow dome. Um, so these are some various options for doming. So let's go ahead. Oh, one more. I want to show you one more. And that is, this is just a piece of a PVC pipe. It's just my, you know, I got a big pipe. It was, it was bigger than this. It was like, you know, like this, right? And we just cut out part of it so it would sit nicely. And then if I want to do bracelet pieces, these are lovely because it's only curved in one direction instead of all directions. And so then that sits very nicely on my wrist. So piece of um, PVC piping is good for that. So let's go ahead and cut out a piece of clay and um, I'm gonna show you how to form it to a dome. All right, so if you want to know more about rolling out clay, I have another fundamentals video called how to roll out your clay, so rolling clay. So go check that out. This is, this is just gonna be a quick demo. All right, so there's that. And then I'm going to peel this off, and there I've got my pretty design and a circle template. Now, I can dome things other than circles. I can dome squares, I can dome triangles, I can, I can dome anything. This is just an example. And then, if I just want that to have a gentle dome, I'm going to use my tap light. And there it is. And one thing though, make sure it's not sticking up. See how it's sticking up there? You do want to gently pat it and make sure that it is all the way against your doming form all the way around. And then you would just dry it like that. You dry it right on the form. So what if I wanted it to be a much deeper? Let's say I'm making a lentil. If I'm making a lentil, then I need a, a much deeper form. I have, to, I have to have nice cups to work with. Now this one, what size, um, what size egg I'm going to use is going to depend upon the size of the piece. Um, so if you look, you know, this is pretty big. I used that big one. And when I push through with the, with the blue one, it pushes through a little bit, but, or, or it pushes through pretty far, it possibly too far. This one might be better. No, I actually think I like, I actually think I like this one. I think that's pushing through. That's giving me the deeper dome that I want that will make a nice lentil shape. So then I would just, instead of putting it onto this, I put on this. Now when I do this kind of a form, I tend to, I'll take my piece and I'll put it face down in the palm of my hand because this is easier than trying to flip it onto here. And I'll just take and position this so it is centered right on that circle. And then I'll turn my whole hand over. And that's a much easier way to get it on there. Now, notice that because it's having to dome a lot, you're getting a lot of this lift around the edges. You need to go around the edges very gently and make sure it is against the form all the way around that you don't have these spots where it's sticking up and you if you if you distribute the pressure with the palm of your hand if you do it with the palm of your hand you're less likely to mess up your design so there it is it's on there and it is uh, nicely domed and i'll just let it dry right on the dome so that's a quick intro to doming if you have any questions for me, go ahead and put them down in the comments, and who knows, maybe I'll answer you with a video answer. See you next time.